joining us in the studio um, is a threesome. Uh, well, it would have been a threesome if one of them hadn't been preoccupied with a work commitment that came at the very last minute. We have the Ben Cook Trio joining us. A Ben Cook Trio. Um, I, I'll let them introduce themselves because it gets better that way. So Ben Cook on my immediate uh, right hand. And who's on your immediate right? Uh, my lovely guitarist, Jordan Deasley. And where is your drummer? Uh, well, he is currently preoccupied, I would say, <laughs> is the kindest way to put it. Listen, it, we really appreciate it. Um, the idea was, of course, to get you all three in the studio, but as you may have gathered, the studio doesn't quite fit three. And when, he, when your drummer decided to play his card, I thought, perfect, let's go with that. <laughs> so the, three, the two of you representing the three. Um, jazz funk is your strong suit. Yes. But like so many musos, not only in this state, in this country, uh, but around the world, seriously compromised by COVID. What did, what did the COVID uh, pandemic mean to you guys very early on? Did you get a grasp that it would knock your, your whole music career for six? Well, yeah, um, just speaking from personal experience, obviously I don't speak for every musician in Melbourne, um, but for us especially, we, we just finished my music degree, so studying jazz at Melbourne Uni. And then it was sort of a real, a real kick in the teeth to sort of leave university and be ready to enter the professional scene and really get the uh, momentum going. And then just immediately everything was completely shut down. Disruption galore. Yeah, because ultimately I think a lot of being a musician is about making connections and building relationships with other people that you can play with and then take that further in your professional career but not being able to play in person with anyone sort of destroys your opportunity to build those connections. You, you talk about connections, but I think you really mean conversation. You, you love conversations with mm. fellow musos. Of course, and yeah. that collaboration is what I think feeds you and drives you, yeah? Uh, Jordan, uh, very similar or very different? Uh, no, quite similar, quite similar. In fact, it was uh, rather disheartening to see, you know, after all this time at uni, uh, so, so keen to get out and, um, you know, play in the real world and have to all of it come to a really, really uh, come to a halt is unfortunate. But uh, things are starting to look a little bit hopeful now, so I'm uh, feeling good about it. Now, I heard through uh, a, a birdie telling us some uh, half truths in the background just before we started that um, you were playing with four, five, six different groups. Yeah. Like, almost like having four, five, six different girlfriends. Yeah. What's it like? Uh, when you're not playing with the Ben Cook trio and you're fitting in with all these other uh, well, it's routines. Great. It's great. It's like, it's like anything else, you know? You see the same people all the time. You start to use the same words and you become sort of uh, an amalgamation. So when you move out of that space, it's, it's good. It's just refreshing. You can use some different words. You know, you can <laughs> chat in different ways. It's but great. jazz funk is your strong suit. What, what are you doing with all the other bands? Well, other really, groups? really anything. Um, just because one thing might be my personal preference doesn't yeah. mean I won't play something else. Okay. Um, the only thing I really wouldn't do would be classical music. Ah. And that's purely because I don't feel like I have the knowledge to do that. Knowledge or the technical skill? Um, either or. You can, you can pick your, okay. pick and choose your reason there, but <laughs> um, just, just not fully competent. But apart from that, you know. Uh, Jordan, um, are you were very similar in your thinking along those lines. Do you are you capable of playing for three or four different uh, bands and groups, or are you you know a, you know one of these guys who who loves to be with one particular group because that's your language, that's your speed, and, and that's indeed that's what you're trying to create mm. a unique sound. The Ben Cook Trio sound is. Um, is one that you need to listen to. It's some great licks, some great music, um, and you guys actually are capable of doing a whole bunch of different things when you're required. You can play favourites, um, you, you, you reach out and, and create your own, your own music. And if you want to hear any more, reach out, get on the web and uh, check out the Ben Cook Trio. Uh, when did the journey, the musical journey start for you, Jordan? Uh, started quite young. I started playing guitar pretty seriously. I was about 10 years old. Um, that inspire mum? Yeah, well, uh, parents were both a very big influence, but also I have to give credit where credit is due, Guitar Hero, uh, <laughs> somewhat prompted um, me to pick it up a little bit more. I just thought it would be cool, and yeah, here we are now. 
Amazing stuff. Um, mm. Ben, when did it start for you? When the journey and, and the idea that, hey, I, I can do this and well, I want to yeah. make it a career? I'm, I'm pretty blessed in that my whole family is quite musical. My mum was a music teacher and both my grandparents on both sides. Fantastic. Music teachers as well. So I started playing piano when I was like four, four years old-ish. And I've always sort of done various instruments. But no, I picked up bass guitar, which is what I do primarily now. And I just sort of kept doing it. Mm. And you just keep doing it. And then sort of, you know, year 10 comes around into high school. You're like, hey, I like doing this. Music heroes? Music heroes, Herbie Hancock, definitely. Love the Headhunters album. I think that's what really sparked my sort of rise up. Um, and then Jack Pistorius, of course. Talking bass player specific. Yeah. Uh, Jordan, your music heroes? Uh, early music heroes would definitely have to be oh, probably Slash, Jimi Hendrix, but later music heroes now. Uh, definitely Bill Evans, massive mm. fan. Jimi Hendrix, uh, you <laughs> must have seen him on some television show because you, you're not old enough. <laughs> no, my parents were very fortunate enough to introduce me to that whole world. Uh, so, um, yeah, that's been fantastic. Yeah, I can, I can, I can almost hear JJ Kale in the background. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. Um, the drummer. How do you find a drummer? Because well, yeah. everyone keeps telling me that they're a very different breed. Yeah, well, you know, I'm is yours <laughs> is yours a member of the this this breed or another breed? Oh, like under rocks in streams by the mountains. <laughs> um, his name. His name is Matthew Dooley, of course. Yep. Absolute champion. Um, excellent player. Excellent player. Yeah. Not present. But, oh, well, he is but he, he's here in spirit. Indeed. Of course, he's always going to be in spirit. He's in my heart. Um, but, but what? No, no, seriously, what makes a, 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 a drummer? What? Why is it that they are so different, and yet they do play such a pivotal role? We, we, if you want to go back to the to the Beatles, uh, there was a guy called Best before uh, Ringo, and yet mm. when Ringo mm. came, that that foursome suddenly had a different cheek about it, a, mm. a different look about it um, and it just took off yeah. so what is it about finding a drummer right. or did they just fall in and, and it, <laughs> well, yeah you'll do <laughs> well, well for me it's it's all drummers all great drummers will play great time right so that's that's sort of a, a blanket statement mm. all great drummers play great time but i think it's in the way that a drummer will sort of support the group whether they are the type of person who likes to come over the top and show some skill, mm -hmm. or the type of person who likes to sit underneath the band and sort of bring the band up. Both are excellent in different situations. Um, and I love playing with both types of drummers. Um, but I think for me, the best type of drummer is the type that really stays under the band and will occasionally come up and play something nice, but for the most part is a nice supportive sort of fallback zone. Yeah, yeah. Um, what makes the trio so good to work with? Is it, is it the fact that you are versatile enough, you're agile enough to almost fit any uh, routine request? And does that make you a, a, a little bit more productive for, corp for the corporate market? Um, so I think the format of the trio is so great because of space, mm. right? Because Absolutely. of space. And because there's so few of us, it's really easy to communicate on the fly. And we've been playing together for, what, like three, four years now? Yeah. Yeah, so when we need to change something or change key or even do a song that we're unfamiliar with as a group, it's really easy to pick that up. Because mm. all I do is I defer to Jordan and mm. say, what key would you like it in? He tells me. Yeah. And then we go two, three, four, and you're off. And it's that easy. <laughs> it's seamless. Exactly. Right? Okay, so what's next for you guys? Um, you, we've heard that there's been enormous disruption. It's taken a, a huge uh, chunk out of your year. What are you expecting to see? Come, we've got Christmas coming. Uh, you guys, is this the busiest time, traditionally the busiest time of the year for you guys? Um, what do you want to um, Christmas time can be a pretty busy time. I remember last year we were quite busy around about that time. Mm -hmm. um, so hopefully with these restrictions easing, uh, we'll be able to get more work. Is, is there one time of the year you don't like to work, like New Year? Um, <laughs> or is that probably um, no. the most productive time of the year? Well, last year we played on Christmas Day. Yeah. So I think it's pretty safe to say I'm happy to do any time anywhere. <laughs> um, I don't know about these guys, but we were pretty happy to play on Christmas Day. I missed 90% of my family's Christmas, but the gig was there, so totally happy to do that. Yeah. Um, yeah. You, you can you can feel the religion. Yeah. Music when music <laughs> is a religion, 
you'll play anywhere and everywhere. Listen, it's been great to catch up. Oh, thank you uh, so really much. I really appreciate you being in the studio here at the Informer. Um, uh, uh, commiserations uh, to the drummer. Of course. <laughs> uh, uh, we send him our best wishes. Um, uh, we look forward to hearing uh, some of the music. In fact, uh, you, you're not leaving us without playing. So what have we got in mind? What are you going to show us? And um, what's, how did the song come about? Uh, great. Well, we'd love to show you a, a beautiful song, uh, So so Danko Samba. It's a... Who's, who's it by again? Uh, originally, I'm not, I'm not entirely sure, but uh, there's a lovely version uh, by the work of uh, Ashford Gilberto and Jao Gilberto and Stan Getz, and that's a fantastic version. Mm. Beautiful Latin song. We love playing it, and we think, uh, we hope that you guys will enjoy it too. Thank you. The Ben Cook Trio. Merry Christmas, guys. Merry Christmas. You, Merry Christmas. Thank you.